Hello everyone, my name is Uthris and welcome back to yet another raid here on Uthopolis in Going Medieval. We have people literally at our doorstep and we're going to have to take them out. Uh, these two towers, I don't know if on camera you all have seen these in action, but they're pretty good at their job. Um, however, because of the way they spawn, usually these type of things spawn like over here and they have to kind of walk over. I don't know how uh, effective they're going to be, but it'll be kind of an interesting experiment. What I'm going to do is rush my infantry out the gate. And then while um, the archers, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of pre-queue up to the towers. So while the infantry is rushing out the gate, the archers will hopefully be close to position. And we'll just kind of get started on that. So Jithu, you need to go, we'll just go down the list. That'll probably be easier to grab all the archers. So Jithu, Reese, Alex, Kevin, Arnav, Edgar, Camden. Jithu is now mentioned again. And our last one, Bioka. Some of these guys we have I think three people to name in our list here. So for those of you who have been waiting patiently to join the town, um, we actually managed to get some people in. So we look forward to that in just a minute. All right, so those guys are on their way. Here's just some more melee. So we'll get them kind of going over towards the door. So the all the archers, they're gonna have to go up the staircase here in the barracks and over to the door and we will now since the attack is starting get everyone to rush out to essentially try to pull their attention over towards us so they don't go around this way right and here we go archers are getting in position we are engaging it's it's going to be a, a hard one battle i think on this one uh because of us not having the time to pick them apart like we usually do. But also because everything is I'm just I'm just checking. Just checking some, some problems here. Bear's gut. Just making sure no one has like massive blood loss or anything. I'm fine if people um, you know lose consciousness or something like that. But if they go down too hard and just straight up die, that would be definitely a problem. Man, a lot of people gaining marksman skill from this. Okay, Edwin. All right, you are in a bad spot. Okay, he's going straight down into unconscious state. Hopefully we can get some cleanup going here. All right, good. We got we got a, a victor, victory right there. And we are cleaning them up now. And we will get out of draft mode. So Edwin, you're the one that went down. Uh, I think you'll be okay though. I think. If someone comes over and heals you, that would be great. Luckily, you know, our, our uh, archers, they're very well protected on the walls. And they can... Um, you know, really be used after a battle to quickly get people healed up because they don't have to rest themselves. All right, we'll just mark all this as gatherables and let's go ahead and get into the naming ceremonies for this episode. So, uh, how many people do we have to name on our list? Looks like we have one two, three, four spaces, but I only have three names written down here. So again, if you want to be added to the list, if I lose a villager and we get another one to replace it, that'll be your kind of opportunity to join the village. We have lost four brave souls so far in the history of Uthopolis. And uh, let's go ahead and get to it. So you, you get to be uh, Edward Uchiha. So we get a, an Uchiha clan member into our town. Hopefully they will not turn on us and kill their brothers. Um, oh, I guess family. Hashtag spoilers. Okay, uh, Marco, you wanted to be in the town. Welcome, Marco. 
Um, and then we will also get uh, Sushil. Sir B. <laughs> this is a big one. Sir. Sir Ya Wan Chi. There we go. Welcome everyone to the town. We have one spot open still, and that means uh, if we take a look at historical records, our total population is up to 19, the highest point it has ever been. So that's pretty cool to think about. Is people going to die? Uh, Marco's in trouble. Sparatai's tending their wounds here. And see if anyone else is in deep doo doo. Um, see if I can't get to Edison here. Come on, game. Let me, let me right click on the right guy. Barth, can you do it? No, I cannot. Uh, can I do it from the side menu? No, I cannot. All right. Well, hopefully we'll just we'll just hopefully get them to medical up our friendlies here. Um, do I have herbs to apply healing ointment? Yes, I have three hundred twenty-five. So we have plenty of herbs. It should be. A relatively quick procedure. All right, so I think I think Barth is doing it now. Cool. Let's let's uh let's go over what we did last episode. So last episode we worked over here, the first part of our keep and castle area. Um, we have a beautiful main library research center with books and bookshelves going up two stories. Uh, two of each research table in here. This is just a wonderful room um, that definitely fits a castle, in my opinion. We also have some um, some stockpiles to just store some extra books. That'll kind of be cluttering up the space in, in some areas that might make it look a little bit more like a research room. So that'll be kind of cool, long term. Outside that, um, this little connecting hallway here, Go straight over to a courtyard, which I have went gone ahead and placed a little bit of a pattern. So I want to grow some crops in here um, that will hopefully act like a good um, a garden sort of aesthetic as much as possible. I'm trying to get the corners. And then a lot of shrubs. So shrubs are going to be in the corners. And we'll do some herbs along the windows. Where we can, you know. Not all this terrain is very usable. Kind of a shame, to be honest. And maybe we'll get some herbs here. Also. Let's try changing the camera a bit. All right, and that makes a nice little vibe. And everything else, I might do some carrots in addition to in these corners. Boy, yeah, some of these clicking of items doesn't go quite as planned. Ooh, let's try maybe that. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Uh, that corner is one here, and then that'll be it. So that'll be the little garden area. I was thinking, honestly, about putting some trees in here also. as like a pretty cool um, look to them. However, um, deciding against it, it'll, it'll just make it look a little too big um, and, and, and overwhelming of a detail in there. So with the little roof on, it looks pretty cool. This is just a nice little square in here with a whole bunch of windows looking in that I am waiting for our stewards to kind of come in here and open just to make it look a little bit more roomy from the inside. And uh, yeah, we get we get some more farmland out of this. Um, integrating our farmland within buildings, I think is how I'm handling our farms at the moment because we've gotten rid of the ones out here. Man, deers, the deer are getting trapped 
well with our little little murder yard right there. So that's that's looking good. This episode, let's talk about the throne room. So we need to detail this thing out a bit. And let's use, I think, clay floor for kind of the, oh, did something get placed that shouldn't have? Looks like it. All right, let's use that. Clay brick has like the royal carpet, you know, going along here. And then maybe have an offshoot That would kind of take you to another section, right? So these are going to be like pathways in, in a sense. And then this one will go out back this way to bring you into the living quarters. And then out back, we might do another armory sort of section. So this might have some stairs to get up onto the walkways. Okay. That's fine. Everything else, I guess, you know, just using standard limestone block floors would be fine. In here. We might use some wooden items. Let's bring down the walls like all the way to just fill in some of these other sections. because that might not be there at the end of the day. From uh, furniture, we will do a couple nice stone chairs for our two thrones, right? Do clay braziers in here. And then we'll put some iron sconce just by the door probably. banners, I think, hanging from the pillars. Some nice long ones. Some good old long boys coming in here. And maybe some shields over the braziers. Something a little bit more unique. And then... A, maybe a religious symbol behind each throne. Give it some decorum. All right. And that about sums that up. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, here over behind the church, you guys are probably gonna notice that the wall is being worked on also through here, how this interacts with the back of the church. Sadly, we might have to get rid of this window here. That's just the name of the game, right? You know, we, we got to uh, get the walls up on this side. And since this was kind of built before uh, the walls were established and before I even really knew I I couldn't build in this red area, um, for, for some reason, I, sh I should have just figured that out way sooner. But yeah, you know, if I had to redo this, I would probably bump this for like another two blocks or so just to give us some more room from the wall. But alas, it is not meant to be. So we'll try and connect this part of the wall down to here. Um, I'm thinking about putting a tower at this point and then doing the angle, which should suffice. And maybe a connection point to this wall via steps. And then this one may not directly link over to this tower. It might kind of fall a little short. Um, that way, if you take the whole wall, you don't get the complete high ground. And then this wall doesn't connect to the keep. You know, it just kind of ends at it. Again, to keep that separation of defense, super important to do. And the back buttressing looks pretty good with all of that. The towers 
being that one block higher just makes this look a little bit more regal compared to say like this over here for the garrison. Not to say the garrison looks bad, but uh, that's that one block separation makes the towers look like proper towers a little bit more. Um, I wish there was a ladder or something better than staircases for these towers because honestly it just would be a, a little bit of a you know room saver on them but overall this this building's gonna look great it's gonna be a nice square structure but because of you know the roof here and the roof going this way and an open section it's gonna look varied which i think is is at least what you want to shoot for if you're going to make a square structure, right? Height variations, kind of verticalities uh, playing off each other, negative space with the lack of roofing here, right? And um, angles, so straight lines being broken up um, by shapes. So all that I think should function very well. So let's go ahead and get to the meat of this episode. And that is everything uh, kind of over here on the right side of the keep. And what's going over here is the items um, for whoever wins the election from episode 13 um, will get to live in here, even though I can't assign beds, I wish I could. Um, and this side of the keep is going to be a little bit more of a private dining space um, and then a private bedroom up top maybe a couple spare rooms things like that and then a storage thing at the very top which will lead to kind of a larger defensive battlement so if you guys think about this shape as a bunch of squares we're going to have a square for the library we're gonna have a square for the courtyard, a long rectangle for the um, throne room, a centralized square over here for the actual living arrangement, and then a back kind of battlement to just kind of watch this northern edge. And uh, let's just kind of get started on it. Uh, from a blue point perspective, we can just let the game run. It's no biggie here and so let's do some layouts hmm I'm thinking let's go ahead and get this all measured out so we're gonna double up all these walls that's an easy win for our shape here. Give it a nice, sturdy door. All right. And we're going to fill in some terrain out here. Uh, that kind of throws in a bit of a wrench at our locations. This location is probably going to get another tower. So let's see what we can do from a food hall perspective. Um, so from here to probably here. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so this will be kind of ground floor. Mm, might bump that out one more or two more. Let's go ahead and bump that out. Don't want to use too many bricks here. And we'll bump these out also. So there and there. Give us a little bit more leeway with this space. Dig these spaces up uh, from a foundational perspective. And that means I kind of want to end up having like a wall connect this way. 
straight over to the wall that we are already building. And we're gonna have to do that too. Okay. Yeah, this is this is gonna take a while to build, and there's a lot of considerations um, to do. And because of everything being so spaced out, it's gonna be a little while until people can get out here to build stuff. Also, with the fact that we are still kind of decorating and building the interior areas there, but we can't, you know, we can still continue to just lay things down and go from there. So from the edge. Let's say this is the true edge, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the true edge here. This might be its own little armory type section. And for the sake of our squares, I'm going to bump this out to be something like that. So this might be like a war room, ready room sort of thing. Um, it may be their own little private garrison sitting back here, which could be pretty cool. Um, we're going to have to do some chopping of trees. Kind of clear this out though, because we need to be able to see what's back here. So we're gonna clear those out. Uh, we're going to be clearing out these trees also, again, just to see what's back here. So instead of going through the whole blueprint phase, because let's be honest, these episodes don't have enough time um, for me to get into the nitty gritties, and I'm also kind of winging this at the same time, what I'm going to do is, like I said, um, get maybe the first floor in here for like the little private dining hall and the pathway up to the second floor, which will have some of the living spaces. Uh, figured out we'll get this all leveled up and then we'll kind of go from there okay so here we are it's been about has it been an end game year i don't know it, it it feels like forever and we are back with uh this this finished structure here at the rear of the great hall these these things are taking longer and longer to make i tell you um, but we're almost done with the keep. Um, there's just a couple of detail items to throw in here, but I decided that I might as well just show you the base and how it looks right now, uh, before we move on to kind of the east wing here, which is something undecided currently. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure that out in the next day or so, what to put in here and, uh, kind of what its purpose. It looks like it kind of just links up to the wall that also the garrison links up to so if you think about our castle uh, from like a top-down holistic perspective the barracks goes across the gate and then over here into the keep and we have just kind of this large u-shape structure as our main battlement uh, which is pretty cool to have it spread out like this um, kind of wrapping around the great hall but Nonetheless, let's just hop into some of the details of this thing. I really like the way the back kind of ended up here. Um, I raised everything up above the roof line on the throne room kind of location. Uh, we even got, I managed to fit in a balcony. Look at that. And some detailing around the footers and supports just to make it feel a little bit more regal. So that's pretty cool. If we peel back the roof, Number one, you can see the throne room in here with the two thrones. Uh, I decided to put the stone kind of temple behind there as just kind of a back piece, which looks pretty good. I might try also uh, the other shrine just to see what that looks like. That might look good too, um, but we'll see. Maybe you guys can let me know if that's kind of a keep or lose it sort of deal. And then um, we'll just maybe peel back to the from the ground floor. So from the ground floor, you enter door double doors here, which you can immediately go up to the second floor or uh, enter this space here. Now this space is probably going to be kind of a private dining hall uh, for the residents in a way. So I was thinking about 
throwing something in here for that. Maybe, um, uh, I, I think that table isn't quite right. Let's try like the long boy table. And yeah, that, that centers itself not quite nicely enough. Okay, no, no long boy table it is. It's gonna be the quality medium table, I think, because it's three and three. Okay, so so this might end up being like the the lordly kind of dining room, um, so they don't have to go all the way over to the great hall and eat with the plebs of society. Um, so that'll be cool. It even comes with its own storage little closet out on one side, which is a pretty neat little extra room here. So a lot of space on that floor. As you go up to the second floor, because of the way you have to kind of fit staircases in here, um, this is probably going to end up being like a living space and a balcony area. Um, this one will probably be just some tables and chairs and details like that will fit in here. And then you make it up to the top floor, which is going to house um, the master suite over here. Um, we might end up making this like a little closet type area. Um, and also roof access to the main battlements, the lower battlements, and then around the corner, another staircase to the top battlements here. So, um, you know, the guards never enter the private quarters um, of any of these floors. They just maintain the stairwell, which I think is fine. That's that's fine enough for a privacy access. Um, any Anything um, separate, uh, would have just inflated the build a little bit too much so I just decided to make that a little bit more um, private back through there so that turned out really well um, other little things of course we are slowly connecting the wall together so that's turning out great we have a new well kind of out here in the yard between the two buildings maybe the kitchen uses this one a little bit more who knows it's just right outside the door so it made sense a little bit of a dead space here anyways um, and building a angled structure in this game with the way the roof kind of works would be a bit of a nightmare so I decided to just have that kind of take up the dead space um, the garden looking pretty good in here which is great for like both sieges and um, just from an aesthetic standpoint uh, we got you know bushes in here and it's just looking rather lively which is great that's kind of what you want to see in your little garden space and uh extending the wall finally along the cathedral side and we will be working on connecting these up and maybe putting a guard tower here and finishing up this guard tower then we can flatten out all this terrain um and that might be it. So there's a lot for me to work on between episodes to prepare for what might be the final episode in the results of the votes from episode 13 on who will lead Uthopolis into the future and gain access to their own lordly castle. So definitely vote. Continue voting until I am done recording that. Uh, the votes are going to be pretty much open. Um, with that, thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed Going Medieval, feel free to subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. Button? 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 I don't know. Something like that. Do something. And uh, we'll see you all in the next video.